Baby, you wake up. Mama is very happy today. You know, it is a very special day today. Your nanny has um, arranged a beautiful function. Yes, yes, a beautiful function. It's known as baby shower and also walakapu. You know what is walakapu? Yes. All our relatives, auntie, grannies, all are coming to visit us. They will give us lots of gifts, sweets and wear us bangles. Yes, today we are uh, having very fun today. We will dance, we will enjoy, okay? Yes. Yes, you are happy now? Okay. Mama? Ramya, what are you doing there? You forgot about today's speciality? No, Mama. I am getting ready. I will be back soon. I am going to pray. After prayer, I will come down. Okay, don't forget to wear that bangles, wear that jewels, okay? Okay, okay. I am getting ready. Yeah. First, let me pray. After that, I will go down. God bless me, God bless me, bless me always. I am your little baby, please protect me. You are my papa, you are my mama, you are my world as well. Help me always, help me always with your invisible hand. I can see you in me, my God. I can see you in me. I can't touch you, but I feel you always in my Now I am going down. Let me see if who else has come. Has any, anyone came down there? Ramya? Mama? Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready now. Yes, I am ready. I am very excited now. Okay, okay. Yes. Look, all our friends are, friends are, ladies are coming. So come on. Our Tinsi auntie and Jensi auntie. Welcome, Tinsi. Welcome, Jensi. Hi. 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 How are you? I am fine. Hi, Tinsi. Oh, Hi, Jensi and Hi. Hi. Today you are looking very pretty. Thank you, Andy. Okay. I'm so happy by seeing you. Okay, thank you, dear. Baby is also very happy. Okay, okay. I also have bangles, Jensi. Okay, okay. where me? Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Ah. ah. Thank you, thank you. Yes, now you are looking too much beauty. 
You can do like this. Okay. Then that sound. That is uh, baby, no? Baby can hear that sound also. That bangle sounds. Mm, yummy. Mama, who, who has skin nest? Look, our uh, Firus and the Ambli and it. They both are coming. Hi, Firus. Hi, Ambli. Come, come. Yeah, Hi, yeah. Sandy. Hi, Firus and the. Hi, Sylvia. How are you? I am fine. Very happy Look. today. Look, I Hi, am Ambli and the. Hi, Rimya. How are you? Looking so Hi. beautiful Hi. today. Thank you. God bless you, dear. Be happy always, okay? Thank you, thank you. We are very lucky. See? Show your hands. I want to put the blankets for you. And open your mouth. Open. Okay. Enjoy your day. Thank you, thank you. See, baby, can you hear this? Yes, it's very, very nice, right? Wow. Thank you, Abli Andy. Thank you, Fairuz. Ramya, are you happy now? Yes, I'm very happy. Who else are there? Uh, our Shehna Andy and Sherin Andy. Look. Both are coming. Hello, how are you? How are you? I am fine. Okay, okay. You are looking today very pretty today. Okay. I am coming with some sweets. I know you like sweets, right? Yes, yes. Some sweets. Ah, ah. Mmm, mm. wow, very tasty. Yeah, show your neck, show your neck. Ah, little, little black. I think this is boy. Yes. Yeah. You are... I bring some two bangles, Demya. Show your hand. Are you okay? Are you okay, Ramya? Yes, yes, I am okay. It's very nice. One piece. Seeds. Okay. Take this sweet, Sherry Nanti. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. God bless you, Ramya. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Ramya, look. Your uh, Shamna aunty is coming. Look, she is also so beautiful. Hi, Shamna. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Shamna. Unmute, unmute, Shamna. How are you, Ramya? I'm fine. Okay, I'm brought a bangle for you. Show I'm me your really hand. Excited. Yeah, you are looking so pretty today. Thank you, thank you, dear. Okay, God bless you. <coughs> Demya, how do you feel now? Are you happy now? Because all our friends and relatives are come. Yes, I am very happy. Where is Fairuz? 
yesterday she told me she is prepared some uh, surprise for you where is she yes i am here ha ah, firuz you told me you prepared uh, some surprise for ramya yeah, what is that yeah miss pinu i have some questions with me uh, i will ask to you all if you know the answers please give me is question type yeah my first question is healthy habits during this trimester are most crucial for the well being of the developing fetus this trimester is uh, more crucial it is more important first trimester yes miss shabana let's answer then how much weight gain in normal during pregnancy in pregnancy we gain how much weight normal around 10 kg around around 10 kg yeah 10 to 12 then in uh, airlines they won't allow expected mothers to fly after which week of pregnancy 7th month after 32 weeks yeah 34 to 36 36 mm, then how long is the average pregnancy how long Nine. is the average pregnancy 9 point something yeah in uh, can you tell in weeks weeks 38 weeks 38 to 40 weeks yes yes we know uh, what is the common eye color in newborn babies blue blue ah uh, yes 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 amli then what kind of class do pregnant women attend to, le to learn about about the birthing process is there is a class that is uh, that Natural is class what what is the class prenatal ah uh, lamaze lamaze class the class uh, that name is lamaze ah uh, what is given to laboring woman to help relieve pain oxytocin ah uh, epidural injection mm. then what sense heightens in the mother during pregnancy all night what sense sense i can the mother tasting sense taste dark tail dark tail is not there smelling that is why vomiting is there gustatory yeah uh, then when do babies typically begin to kicking after 5 months 5 months yeah 4 to 5 months 20 25 weeks weeks 25 weeks then one more question when does the baby bump typically begin to show after 5 months 3 months yeah 12 to 16 weeks uh this can be easy um, what is the name of the cord that connects small man baby a placenta cord umbilical cord this is yeah this is the question section um, i will <laughs> come after something thank you for your super super wow fire super fire super question we all are enjoyed a lot so where is that jency and tinsy yes we are here I think you also yes. prepared something for Ramya, right? Yes, yes, yes. One surprise. Yes. I got a clue. <laughs> okay. Then Jensi. I play. Welcome to my gully. You must be wondering, is it a gully boy scene or not? Both plays. This is where I was.
Ramya, don't eat too much sweets, okay? Okay. <laughs> Where is Shabana? Shabana? Ah, yes. Mama. Please take care, Ramya. Okay, I want to uh, ah. serve food to our guest. So I am very okay, busy. Okay, to, okay. So take care, Ramya. Okay? Yeah, I will yeah, come sure, back. Sure, sure. Go, go, go. Didi, Ramya Didi, all these sweets are for me. Very less sweets, okay? No, no, I want more. I want more. <laughs> oh, no, Didi. Don't you know, during pregnancy, you should not eat too much of sweet. What happened? Why are you feeling so sad? Don't worry. I will share with you. But okay. I don't okay. Know. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling... Okay. <laughs> but I don't know. I feel a little restless. There is some cramp on my... Oh, Didi. Why? What happened? See, there is sweat also over your hair, forehead. Why are you so stressed? Uh, I don't know. I feel cramp on my stomach. Oh, Didi, I don't know anything about this. Thirsty. Let me have some water. Yeah, yeah, please have some water. Uh, Didi, anything about the, uh, your, uh, your symptoms or anything? If I go and ask Mama, I'm sure Mama will get so tense now. She's managing the mama. Mama. Okay, I will do one thing. I will call uh, Meera Didi and I will ask, okay? Okay, okay. I don't know why she didn't attend today's uh, function. Let me just call her. Okay. Just ask her why she is not coming. Yeah. Yeah, it's ringing. Hello? Hello, Shabana. Hi. Meera Didi. What happened? Why you didn't come to the panel? Shabana, I told you, right? I have a webinar now. How, leave all that. How is Ramya Didi doing? Yeah, she's doing well, but not that well. She's feeling really right? so depressed and she's saying she got cramps. Different, different medical words which I don't understand. Oh, is it? Okay, Shabana, you forgot. I had told you about one webinar. No, you forgot about that. Webinar? Which webinar? Are you... Shabana, I am doing a course no, in National uh, NCDC, National Child Development Council, NCDC. Don't you remember? I had told you about yeah, this yeah, course yeah. and the webinar and all. You forgot. Yeah, I remember you sent the prospectus of this NCDC to me. No, I totally forgot the. Oh. Can you tell yeah. me a little more? I don't know what it is. Uh, actually, I didn't have time to check. Can you please tell me what it is? Okay, okay. I'll tell. And you have to join to this course. Okay, it's really beneficial for all like this. Okay. Sure. National Child Development Council. It is called NCDC. Okay. And it's a leading national NGO established to promote women and child welfare and ensure child education of India. Okay. So, uh, Didi, this course, uh, do they have this Montessori with them? Montessori, there are a lot of courses in that, right? Yes, yes. I'll tell you more about that, okay? Wait a sec, one minute, I'll tell you. Yeah, okay, okay, Didi. It has got Montessori training, more, more, so many trainings are there in this, you know, and you know, the master brain behind this. It's Who it is? It's none Hello. other than, it's none other than our Baba Alexander, sir. Have you heard his name? Yeah, I think... Uh... Baba Alexander, sir, he's conducted free uh, English spoken uh, program, right? In Facebook. Yes, yes. More than you that. I have seen the posters. 
yeah so before that he is you know one more thing he is a familiar world icon he is a founder of one world one language and a global country movement and the master trainer of ncdc and wow. uh, have you heard of his uh, free um uh, 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 communication skill uh, spoken in rapid english uh, training program yeah, yeah i have seen in the facebook and in youtube also i think uh, they are uh, doing live telecast yes I yes it, but uh, i didn't attend all the classes from next week i i will surely attend you have to attend okay you know in at ncdc they promote 50 hours of online rapid spoken english training in addition they have 15 categories in training including personality development presentation skill meditation pranayama interview skill lots mm. of things and you know one thing shabana it's all absolutely free training provided you know are you serious Yes, that's why I'm saying you know you have to join to the CDC program. It's a real oh, wonderful so experience, you know. Yes, and uh, you know I am I am taking up this course, right? And you know it has changed me a lot, Shabana. Not only personally, even professionally, they train us so well. We won't know we are getting trained, you know. And uh, as teacher, no, we'll have to know lot of things. And I was telling you about this webinar, right? That is oh, also part of our learning. Today, today also you have some webinar. What it is? Yes, yes, that is what I'm saying. All these uh, trainings, whatever they are giving us from NCDC, they always provide some webinars every Saturday. Uh, Saturday is very informative, you know, and that is why I came up with this topic. Today we are having a, a webinar on prenatal and antenatal uh, care, which Ramya Didi must watch this. You know, it will really yeah, benefit it is her a lot. Very need of the moment. Very need of the moment. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, she will do. Uh, you know, and uh, best part is no our uh, moderator, our Bindu ma'am. She will mm -hmm. find a nice person like this to give classes. You know, live classes like this, and you know, all our students in our batch are really making benefits out of it. And today. You know who is the who is the trainer who is the presenter today? It's a well-known oh, gynecologist. Yeah. What's her name? She is Dr. Sheena Abilash, a gynecologist from Marian Medical Center, Pala. Have you heard of her? Dr. Sheena Abilash. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. heard about her. She is very famous. Is right. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's a her. It's a webinar uh, from her, you know. And you say, you please tell Ramya Didi not to miss this chance, okay? I will mm -hmm. send you across the brochure about the timing. It's at four four o'clock today. Don't miss it out, ah. Uh. Okay, but Didi, is the webinar free or do I have to pay? No, Shabana. I told you right. It's absolutely free. Anybody can attend really? this webinar. Yes, and it's mm -hmm. conducted every Saturdays. Okay. So today, today it is at four p.m. Every four uh, p.m. Okay, you will have not missed it. That's why I didn't come up for the baby shower. Also, what to do? Okay, But I'm okay. I don't I really don't want to miss out this webinar. Also, it's so important as okay. a teacher. Also, even I have to know all these things. Teacher need not teacher uh, not only should know only about teaching. They have to know about the child psychology and that child psych. This uh, webinar also, no, it's part of the child psychology. What we're learning, you know. So it's very important for me, and equally important for Ramya Didi. So you tell her to come and join. Okay, you don't forget to yeah, tell her. Please uh, send. Uh, please send the Zoom link. Uh, okay, Zoom ID. I will let yes, her yes. watch. Yes, yes. Because she's very stressed. I, I don't know how to come. Don't worry. Tell her once she attends this the webinar. No, she's really going to have a total change on this topic. She won't have any tensions going forward. So you don't forget, like how you Thank forgot you about so much, uh, telling. Uh, like how you forgot to join NCDC, don't forget to tell her this, okay? And you have to join. Yeah, yeah. I'm very eager to join this NCDC. Yeah, NCDC. you have to. There's a batch NCDC coming up. Yeah, okay. I'll send you right away. Please check that, okay? Okay, 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 Didi. And okay. say hi to Auntie. Hi to Ramya yeah, Didi. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Bye, bye. Okay, bye, bye, Didi. Take care. Shabana. Yeah, Didi. Ah yes, mama. 
Who was on the phone? Mama, it is Ramya Didi. She told uh, she can't come. I thought she will come late for the function, but she's ha you know what? She's having a webinar in her class. She's attending an NCDC Montessori course, and they today they are conducting a webinar on prenatal and antenatal care. Oh, I thought I thought uh, she already told me about that. She had one and webinar you know today. Uh, last week, when we uh, went to Sheetal Auntie's home, she told that there is a very famous gynecologist, Dr. Sheena Abilaj. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, yes. Now uh, I remember she that. Is the chief. So we have to attend this webinar. How can we attend that webinar? Is there uh, any... She told that uh, it is, is on Zoom meeting only. So I have my oh. Zoom, I know. So uh, we can launch one more thing. It is absolutely free. Free uh, webinar, yes, yes. isn't it? Yes, see, oh, that's good. That's good. Who is coming and giving webinar on the selected topic, and it is absolutely free for everyone. Oh, okay, okay. We can uh, also join that webinar. Yes, yes, yes. I will prepare the laptop and uh, we will surely join. Because what happened, you know, I think Ramya Didi is little uh, stressed or leg like, tensed, I think. Oh, isn't it? So okay, once yeah. she attends. Webinar, I think she will get an idea about the things what she will be facing. Oh, I think the gynecologist is coming for that web webinar, right? Yes, 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 yes. Ah, okay, then tell to uh, Ramya. She also yes. uh, attend that webinar, okay? We yeah, all, sure, we all sure. can attend. Yeah, sure, sure, Mama. Sure, Mama. I will say it to Didi, okay? Ramya Didi? Yes, yes, Shabana. Ramya Didi, Please come on, get Shabana. ready, okay? We have to attend one webinar, okay? Okay, okay. Yeah, webinar. What the yeah, yeah. It's uh, Meera Didi will send the link. This is uh, like a gift to you for today. Okay. It is uh, conducted by Dr. Sheena Abilash, who is a very famous gynecologist. And uh, the webinar is about prenatal and antenatal care. Okay, okay. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah. Is. Okay, you prepare the laptop. Okay, I will just... Okay. You uh, take the laptop and keep it aside. I will just come now, okay? Okay, let me switch on. Ambli auntie? Yes? What you guys are discussing? Me and my friends are discussing about, is this a boy baby or a girl baby? Ah, that we you are know how to find the gen? Do you know how to find the gender? Because I'm so eager whether I'll be getting a niece or nephew. Do you know the ways? Yes, we are discussing about that. Me and my uh, friends also discussing. I think what, it's what a boy is? baby. I think what? it's... Yes. See, see her, uh, see her stomach is uh, like that. I, I can feel like that. What ah, about Pyrus? Yes. Miss Pyrus? Yes, sir. Is it... I do feel like that. See? Yes. Miss Pyrus also feeling like that. See? I want to, uh, like, uh, when I talk to my friends, no, they told something about this Chinese calendar. What is, is that? True? That's I don't know. But no. uh, I feel like that uh, when I see her uh, stomach or neck side, I think sure it's a boy baby. I feel let I'm me, feeling like Let me like check that. in the Google, okay? Pyrus, okay. Auntie, do you have any idea how to find the gender of baby? No, do you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we are discussing. Yeah, we will check in Google. Oh, Ramya, be so excited to know about the gender. Let me also check. Is there any way to find out uh, the gender, okay? Demya, which baby do you like? Which baby do you like? Mm. Any both. Any baby is okay unless it both. is a healthy baby. Yeah. Yeah, it's also a healthy yes. baby. Yeah, you baby. will get a healthy. Oh, uh, in internet, it is they have told that there I is can no particular way. In uh, Google, they are saying that there is no particular way to find the gender of baby. 
Hmm. But uh, I, I, I know my mother also tall like that. That is only I know. With that, I, I decided like that. It's a boy baby. Okay. I think those are myths. One will get to know the gender, but it is prohibited and it is very illegal to find the gender, right? Yes. 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 Scared about that. Okay, no problem. As far we get a very healthy baby and my DD is fine during delivery, I am okay with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's but enough. Baby, I am very happy. If it is girl, I can wear her nice frocks. If it is boys, boy, I will, uh, I have to play around, <laughs> run around a lot. <laughs> so both are happy for me. Okay, Didi, I want to ask you some riddles, okay? Not just to you, to all our guests, okay? Are you all ready? Let's play a small riddle game. Yes, we are ready. Yes. yes. Okay. If the baby, okay, if it is a girl baby of your sisters, what you will be calling her? Your Miss. sister's girl baby. Miss. 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 Yes, correct. Then baby's feeding utensil. Baby's feeding utensil. It is a six letter word. Feeding bottle. 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 Yeah, bottle. Okay. Next, um, Freddy, girl baby color? Pink. 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 And traditional boy color? Blue. 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 Baby blue. Yes. And a room in the house for young children? A room in the house for young children. Playing. Baby room. Yeah, playroom. Yeah. Okay. This is very, very important. Okay. My, my Didi has bought bundles of this. A wet towel which are used to clean baby skin. Wipes, wipes. baby wipes. Yes. wipes. Mama, I don't know why, but Didi is having bundles of cupboard. She is all day going to wipe the baby, right? <laughs> okay, no one idea. more question, okay? Uh, grains used as baby's food. It is, it is a six letter, six letter word used as grains for baby's food. Is it ragi? Ragi? Ragi. Oh, ragi is four letter. Yeah, four letters. Millet. Is Fairuz auntie what you said? Millet. Yeah, millet. Yeah, millet we can count. Cereal. Cereal. Is it six letter? Six letter. Cereal. <laughs> okay. What is baby's eating apparel? Why eating, why feeding the baby? You put this on the, uh, put this over the baby. Apron, apron. Yeah, okay. Apron or bib. Yeah, correct. And a toy which baby shakes. Is it bangles? Kili kambetti. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are calling in Kilikam Betty. In English? Rattle. Yeah, rattle. Okay, that's the end of uh, this fun riddle. So how about uh, we do a dance? Is it okay? We all do some dance yeah. movement? Of yeah. course, of course. Yes, yes. will happy. Yeah, yeah. Remy also want to do that. Yes, Remy can song, also join. Your favorite song you put. 
Shabana, yes, Mama. You told about that webinar. Ah, yes, Mama. Then uh, which time it start? Oh, it's four o'clock, Mama. I think. Oh, we spent too much of time in uh, playing the riddles. Chichi, chichi, didi, yes, come, come. I think ready. it is good. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me get ready. Yeah, let me also log in. Okay. Oh, yeah. It is started. It is started. Yeah. Yes. Hi, hello everyone. A warm good evening to all. It's an honor itself for all who have gathered here for gathered here for the webinar on prenatal and antenatal care organized by NCDC Orion Circle. Me, Gen C Loop, on behalf of 33rd online batch, would I like to take this opportunity to welcome our founder, Baba Alexander Sir, who is among us for this webinar. Welcome, Sir. Our mentor, our supporter, our motivator, our loving Bintu ma'am who is backbone for this wonderful educational webinar for us. Welcome you dear ma'am. A well-known gynecologist from Marian Medical Center Pala, Dr. Sheena Abilash is here with us today evening to take us through this educational webinar on prenatal and antenatal care. We are happy to have you with us, dear ma'am, keeping your busy schedule aside for us. A program is said to be a success when we have a good encouragement and response from our audience. Welcome you all to this webinar. Before we get into this session, let me brief you about our guest today, Dr. Sheena Ablash. Dr. Sheena completed her MPBS from Kote Medical College and is working in Marine Medical Center, Pala, from past few years. The positive attitude and dedication is the much needed skill for this profession, which Dr. Sheena possesses. We are lucky to have such a young and dynamic guest for our class today. So saying this, I welcome you dear ma'am to our session. I am welcoming ma'am. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, we can start. You are muted, ma'am, unmute. <laughs> I would like to thank uh, Bindu ma'am for selecting me. And uh, let us start right away. Sorry for making you to wait because I had a busy theater day today. So, it's okay. Uh, I, I'm going to take a brief uh, section on preconceptional and antenatal care. God could not be everywhere and therefore he made mothers. No other relation in this world is as beautiful, pure and selfless as that between a mother and her child. Pregnancy is not a disease. Pregnancy is a period of celebration when every family member have to be prepared to welcome the new guest in the family. Positive attitude plays the lead role in that period. There are some common complaints arise during pregnancy, but instead of taking it as a stressful situation, every woman has to enjoy that situation it leads to minimum complaints and complications afterwards. Preconceptional care. 
regarding preconceptional care that is before conception what we can do have a uh, successful pregnancy or a, a healthy pregnancy always better to have a planned pregnancy and you can take prenatal vitamins that is folic acid 5 mg per day before conception that is at least 3 months prior to conception then you have to consult a doctor or a gynecologist if you are having any medical diseases such as diabetes mellitus hypertension thyroid disorders allergy asthma any uh, menstrual irregularities etc coming to the antenatal care once you are uh, you can detect your pregnancy by missing your periods and you can nowadays do a home urine pregnancy test kit to diagnose pregnancy but always you have to confirm the pregnancy by visiting a hospital and you have to repeat the pregnancy test from there and in the first visit you uh, when you see a gynecologist she will ask for you about how long you are married and how about your cycles whether you are having a regular cycles or not and whether there is any history of any previous illnesses in the past what is your date of last menstrual period and uh, whether there is any history of uh, family history of diabetes or any health issues in your first degree relatives and in the first visit itself you she will examine you for pulse rate blood pressure pallo any abdominal examination any abdominal pain any bleeding per vaginal examination and the first visit itself uh, she may prescribe you an ultrasound examination also so how frequent should be your antenatal visits to your doctor ideally you should up, up to first 28 weeks you should have at least once a month visit and up to 36 weeks twice a month thereafter weekly till delivery according to the world health organization you should have at least four antenatal checkup visits minimum now the physical examination includes uh, as i already told pulse rate blood pressure and weight of the patient is she is gaining adequate weight and in the case of those patients with high blood pressure you have to look for pedal edema any facial puffiness pallor and also as you know there are certain changes occurring in the breast during pregnancy your breast will enlarge there is a discoloration or hyperpigmentation of the areola so breast examination is also an important part of the physical examination during pregnancy and also retract a nipple after delivery retract a nipple can cause a problem for your breast feeding so breast examination is also important and systemic examination means your cardiovascular system and respiratory system you we have to examine and obstetric examination the doctor will palpate your abdomen palpate for your fetus the presentation of the fetus uh, the lie of the fetus and heart rate of the fetus then what are high risk pregnancies high risk pregnancies are those pregnancies where you may require more uh, denatal visits more uh, frequent monitoring of your baby as well as the mother these include those are elderly preemie those who are more than 35 years of age those who are short statured patients that is less than 145 cm those who are having mal presentations that means breech presentations or transverse lie then those with bleeding in the pregnancy that is called as antepartum hemorrhage those with pregnancy induced hypertension diabetes mellitus in pregnancy twin gestation and those who are having a precious pregnancy means those who have conceived several years after the marriage or those who have lost their uh, pregnancy several times before this and coming to the nutrition during pregnancy always people ask to us what extra we have to take during pregnancy you need additional 300 kilo calories per day apart from what you are taking before pregnancy and if you are breastfeeding you need around 500 to 600 kilo calories per day and we expect an average weight gain of 11 to 12 kg but if you are a no obese patient you need not require that much weight to gain 
It also needs iron supplementation and calcium supplementation from the second trimester onwards. Folic acid uh, supplementation, as I already said, from preconception and also in the first trimester. The folic acid is a wonderful vitamin that needs for the development of your neural system, neural development of your baby. If there is a folic acid deficiency, that can lead on to neural tube defects and congenital malformations in your baby. So it is WHO uh, tells that all the pregnant women should take folic acid in the first trimester, that is five milligram per day. And apart from daily, uh, normal daily diet, you can split the diet into five to six times, especially during the first trimester when there is vomiting, nausea, indigestion, bloating, etc. And also you can take whatever is available in your home rather than taking junk food. And you have to drink at least eight to 10 glasses of water per day. And you have to have adequate rest also at least one hour in the afternoon and at least eight hours of sleeping in the night. And you should avoid smoking and alcohol and excess intake of caffeine also should be avoided. So limit your intake of coffee per day, minimum three cups. Then coming to the immunization or vaccination during pregnancy. In India, we gave tetanus toxoid injection two doses. That is at the first, uh, in the government sector, they say you have to take it at the, once you diagnose pregnancy, then take the second dose after one month. Here in our setup, we give at, uh, on, at around 12 weeks, then you have to repeat the dose after four to six weeks. And uh, sometimes uh, in outside India, they give Kidap, that is tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis vaccine in the third trimester. Booster dose is given in the third trimester. And also in the uh, USA and UK also, when there is influenza, it's very common in October, December months, they, they advise flu shot that, is, that can be taken in the third trimester. Otherwise, generally, the live attenuated vaccines are avoided during pregnancy. Unless it is, um, uh, you have to always wear the risk versus the benefit. And one word about the COVID vaccination during pregnancy. Actually, uh, we adv advocate two doses of COVID vaccination at least 84 days interval, even during pregnancy to protect our mothers as well as babies from the detrimental effect of COVID-19 virus. Then coming to the role of ultrasound. So nowadays, ultrasound has become uh, it's the most common tool to assess the well-being of your baby. So what are the uses of ultrasound? In each trimester, ultrasound has got its own uses. First of all, in the first trimester, once you visit, once your uh, pregnancy test is positive, we do first three months in the first visit itself, we do an ultrasound to confirm your pregnancy. So to rule out ectopic gestation, whether it is intrauterine or extrauterine, whether it is not an abortion, your fetus is viable or not. And we usually advise another ultrasound at 12 weeks that is called an NT scan for nuchal translucency scanning that is done to rule out any chromosomal anomalies in the baby. And at up to uh, around 18 to 20 weeks, we do a targeted anomaly scan to rule out any congenital malformations in the fetus. And in the third trimester, we do ultrasound for assessing whether your baby is growing properly and his or her health condition is um, in a good position. So that is it. And also in the first trimester, you can diagnose any uterine or ovarian pathology like fibroid or ovarian cyst along with that may complicate your pregnancy along with the well-being of the fetus. So what are the warning symptoms? That is when you, uh, the, when you approach to the term, what are the warning symptoms that you, you should be aware of? You have to count the fetal movements from 28 weeks onwards. You should have at least 10 movements in 12 hours or you have to count the movements in uh, one hour at least three movements. So if there is any decreased fetal movements, if there is any bleeding, bleeding of any nature is abnormal in pregnancy. When you, have, when you are pregnant and when you have bleeding per vagina, always consult your doctor or water breaks or leaking PV. And those with high blood pressure, 
there can be the bp may be exaggerated when you have headache blood blurred vision etc so at that situation it is also an obstetric emergency you have to consult your doctor and the uh, normally when there is the onset of labor pains so the physical examination in the third trimester you have i have already told you blood pressure normal it is 120 80 if there is more than 100 140 over 90 in two occasions it is said that the blood pressure is very high so in that situation you have to start the patient on anti hypertensives and you have to take the weight whether the baby is growing properly presentation position of the fetus and your doctor will Uh, make you hear the fetal heart sound by a fetal doppler and you can assess the well being of the baby by doing an on stress test and in primary gravidas we do a per vaginal examination to assess the pelvis and the feasibility of a vaginal delivery uh, at time so investigations as i already told but certain investigations are uh, that is a sixth month you have to do a glucose tolerance test to assess the whether there is any gestation diabetes mellitus or not and uh, in those patients with fetal edema you have to do a urine albumin and a pih profile in hypertension and other blood tests that we usually do is uh, in the first visit itself we do hemoglobin blood routine urine routine uh hiv screening test sbsag screening test uh, vtrl hcv screening test and tsh now it is hypothyroidism is very common in our uh, people so always we do a th- tsh and assess whether there is any hypothyroidism or not in pregnant patients the tsh value it should be less than 2.5 if it is more than 2.5 you have to supplement thyroxine so this thyroxin is very important for the normal mental development mo- normal brain development of the baby so always uh, the tsh value is very important in pregnancy and also uh, you have, we have to <clears throat> as you all know there are some certain amount of bleeding will be there even if it is vaginal or uh, cesarean section if there is you have to anticipate uh, heavy bleeding in all cases and you have to counsel the patient uh, patient to arrange enough blood and blood products especially in case of rare blood groups so what are the indication we all expect a normal vagina delivery but in some cases we make the patient may have to undergo elective cesarean section these are when there is a big baby a case of previous cesarean section when the baby is not non vertex that is breech or transverse lie in the case of twins where, where the first baby is non vertex in case of placental abnormalities like placenta previa abruption etc so in some cases even though we plan for normal vagina delivery the patient may require cesarean section when there is fetal distress cord prolapse severe preeclampsia or eclampsia and postpartum hemorrhage so any warning symptoms or un- uh, you have to admit the patient otherwise uncomplicated cases you can admit on date or near date if per vagina examination is favorable mode of induction depends upon the cervical state of the patient that is we call it as a bishop score and we give uh, prostaglandin e1 tablets for uh, cervical ripening followed by artificial rupture of membrane and pitocin trail and we all know there are three stages of labor that is the first stage when the patients have regular contractions cervix is 3 cm dilated to the 10 cm full dilatation of the cervix in a primary gravida this can be uh, this can be delayed even up to 12 hours and in the second stage is the full dilatation of the cervix to the expulsion of the baby and the third stage from the expulsion of the baby to the expulsion of the placenta so in uh, all pregnancies the outcome can be a normal vagina delivery some people require a vacuum or assisted delivery like vacuum or forceps and some people require cesarean section then a few words about antenatal exercise moderate amount of physical activity in otherwise uncomplicated pregnancies is advocated you can walk for at least 10 minutes per day you can have aerobics yoga Uh, etc 
But in some patients, those who are having placenta previa, those who are with a history of bleeding, those with twins pregnancy, precious pregnancy, strenuous activities should be avoided. And the postnatal care, postnatal care, you have to care the newborn baby and the breastfeeding uh, is very important. The technique of breastfeeding, mother has to learn. And also the care of the mother is also very important. Aim of all prenatal and antenatal care is a healthy mother and a healthy baby. That's all for today. Thank you very much. And I think uh, we can have a discussion uh, if you have got any doubts. Yes, you can come on for discussions, okay. Ma'am, uh, I have one doubt. Uh, so our uh, parents and relatives all are saying like uh, in a pregnancy time, uh, you don't eat papaya, pineapple, uh, like that. So any scientific reason behind that uh, Actually, actually uh, some scientific reasons are there. This pineapple contains a chemical called theobromine that can uh, that may be detrimental to some babies. But also, pineapple is very allergic in some patients, so they can have stomach upset. That can mimic false labor pains. So I think previously our grandma told like this because once you eat this pineapple. That can cause gastritis and that can trigger uterine contractions. That may be the reason they advised us do not use pineapple. And about papaya, papaya contain an enzyme called papain. That is uh, previously, it was used as an abortifacient that causes abortions. That's, that may be the reason that they told us to avoid papaya. But this um, papaya, if it is cooked or it is ripened, it will not cause much problem, especially after the first trimester. Okay, okay, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Good I evening. Yeah. I have one question. Like uh, uh, in my pregnancy time, I ate uh, seven and a half months uh, my child born. So uh, that day, that time, I have no uh, slightly in sugar, uh, the diabetic. Uh, after that, uh, uh, two years after I got little uh, uh, diabetic I can uh, check that time I can show then after uh, nowadays I have a diabetic person so the diabetic and the THS why uh, is came after this uh, pregnancy uh, that is nothing like that but only thing is that if you uh, pregnancy is a diabetogenic state due to the effect of hormones that is progesterone can cause glucose intolerance in those patients who are prone to develop diabetes in later life. So I have seen that there's a study that if you are becoming pregnant, diabetic during pregnancy, 40% of those patients can develop diabetes in their future life, especially type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes means diabetes that is developing after uh, some age that is after 25 to 30 years of age, you are developing diabetes. So this those patients prone to develop diabetes in future, likely to have diabetes in during pregnancy also. And TSS also, ma'am, the thyroid. TSH, uh, that is also related because these all are endocrinological problem or hormone problems. So this uh, hypothyroidism, diabetes, etc. in some people, why it is happening? Maybe due to some autoimmune factors that is killing your pancreatic cells, killing your thyroid cells, that is leading to an insufficient amount of insulin or thyroid hormones in your body. That may be the reason. Okay, ma'am. Okay, one more question, ma'am. Uh, 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 okay, <laughs> can you anyone ask? I will later ask. Uh, after after delivery in some babies uh, there will be yellowish in their body and the eye also so uh, some people tell that uh, during pregnancy the mother was wearing nighty uh, so because there was no uh, in olden days uh, ladies used to wear uh, sarees and all so their stomach is uh, exposed to the sun so uh, they don't have yellowish. Uh, so nowadays um, babies are getting more yellow. So 
So is it is there any truth in that? I don't think so because yellow color is due to an increase in the bilirubin level in the baby's body. It is due to several reasons. And most common reason is a breast milk jaundice, something like that. Breast milk, breastfeeded babies, they can have a mild jaundice in the first week of life. And in some other babies, it is due to blood group incompatibility, that is RH incompatibility, especially uh, when a negative patient, blood group is negative and the baby is positive blood group, the already born baby is positive blood group, they can have RH incompatibility. Or if the baby is a, uh, uh, a or B group and the mother is O group, there can be ABO incompatibility. This can cause an increase in the bilirubin level of the baby. Nothing related to dress and all. In my son's, uh, if it, in my uh, case, uh, I am AB positive and my son is A positive. And he was having, uh, after three days, for me, breast milk was not good. Only yellow, uh, that uh, the starting yellow was only coming for three days, first three days. And uh, on third day onwards, his uh, eye has started yellowing. So uh, is it because of the less breast milk or because of the uh, blood? Adequate hydration is very important to prevent neonatal jaundice. Adequate breast milk should be there, but I think yellow fluid, it is normal also. The first three days you will have yellow fluid only, that is called a colostrum. And yes. uh, another thing is this, that A, B and B will not cause. If you are o, o positive group and the baby, your baby is A or B, it can cause O A incompatibility. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Uh, uh, if the mother has thyroid problem, is it possible that the child uh, will get that thyroid? Uh, may not be, may not be. It, should not, uh, she, it is not like that. Uh, mother is having hypothyroidism, uh, will not lead to hypothyroidism in babies. But the thing is that you have to correct hypothyroidism in the mother for the normal mental development of the baby. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Good evening, Dr. Good evening. Shabana. Uh, so I just have a general doubt. Like during pregnancies, uh, like the pregnant mother is often advised to do uh, excess vaginal cleaning to avoid uh, uh, infections or UTI, anything. So what is your say? Like what is the proper way of cleaning uh, vagina during pregnancy or during the normal time also? Ideally, there should not be any vaginal douching. You should not clean your vagina. You can clean the exterior only. That is all that is required. You should not uh, go for vaginal douching. It is not nowadays advised. It can lead to uh, killing of normal vaginal bacteria is there. That is, uh, health, that is for the health of the vagina. You, you are, by your excess cleaning the vagina using antiseptic solutions or soft solution can kill your normal bacteria in your vagina. And that, can, that itself can lead on to vaginitis. So you can clean the, your private parts, but no vagina, routine vaginal douching is not necessary. Even in pregnancy or in normal time. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, when uh, uh, when the in, during pregnancy, uh, when mother becomes emotional, uh, yeah, she uh, emotional. yeah during to the hormonal changes and all, uh, we used to have uh, that um, uh, angry, uh, sad. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, uh, oh very emotional so uh, how uh, how that affects the child uh, will it uh, have more bad effects like uh, uh, anything can you please explain the uh, about that? always uh, it is not good for anyone of us to become angry even if it is a pregnancy or not pregnant or not uh, emotional uh, stability or emotional uh, that is very important. That is very important for the health and well-being of a pregnant mother. And uh, all I can tell you is that you, if you are so much anxious, if you are so much worried about your pregnancy, about the well-being of your baby, 
always you have to ask for help you can ask for help of your parents your husband your close relatives if you have got any worries or in your home or any uh, physical or psychological worries you have to share with somebody that is the most important thing and also you you can engage in some relaxing activities like yoga hearing good music hearing good stories because all this can have a positive impact on the baby who you are bearing whom you are bearing that is hearing music it has been pro proved that it's very good for the health of your baby for for the mental development of your baby so if you are emotionally very much angry that may affect your baby that your baby may be excessively crying after delivery i have seen like that if you are very much anxious or tense your baby may be insecure after coming into the uh, into this world so it's very important to have a happy as well as um, healthy uh, pregnancy to have a healthy baby the mental health is very important if you have got any problem in your family or any um, uh, in your friends uh, if you see that somebody is suffering from some health issues like psychological issues while they are pregnant ask them or help them to have to tide over that situation by asking proper help that is a psychological counseling or even a psychiatric counseling is very important okay and after preg after pregnancy the postpartum anxiety also that also yeah, post affects... postpartum depression postpartum depression if you have if you, postpartum anxiety is common in everyone because you are losing your sleep you have to take care of one more person that is very important and so that anxiety is there for everyone but you can uh, tide over that with the help of your family members that is very important there should be someone to help you the breastfeeding also uh, like uh, lactation will reduce uh, in things if you are so that. much anxious and stress can reduce uh, lactation and all that is breast milk may be reduced and if you are very much worried that my baby is crying because i am not having any breast milk that may not be the reason your baby is crying maybe the baby is having some gas in their stomach or baby is uh, wet or baby is co feeling cold it may it may not be always because of your fault or you are having less breast milk so uh, that is not, uh, that may affect if you are so much worried i am not having breast milk i am not having breast milk breast, this breast milk stimulation is also coming from the hormones are coming from your brain that may be affected so that is and also when breast milk is there and if the child is keep on drinking uh, even though his stomach is full and uh, he keep uh, uh, frequently he is asking is, uh, is it uh, because of insecure or he want the more warmth uh, how is there any relation in psychology no, uh, are you asking for a newborn baby yeah in newborn baby, baby is incessant cry that is continuously crying babies not so, uh, not crying uh, he always uh, keeps on uh, every hour uh, every hour uh, uh, even though he is uh, he is full then again he keeps on uh, he wants uh, milk uh, otherwise he will not uh, leave like that always uh, he he uh, he cannot uh, leave uh, some ch some children some babies uh, if they drink they will sleep for 2 3 hours uh, like that but uh, in that, my son's case it. he okay. he wants always that is actually uh, maybe some insecurity in the newborn that may be the reason but the thing is uh, it is just like what you are uh, training them and whenever they are crying you are giving breast milk then there is no way and actually this is a vicious cycle because whenever the baby is sucking whenever the baby is crying so much gas is going into the baby's stomach and that will cause a colicky pain in the baby's abdomen and that that may be the reason that is the reason the baby is continuously crying and we feel that the baby is uh, requiring more breast milk that is why he is crying so the most important thing uh, you have to feed the baby for at least 20 minutes from each breast and you have to burp the baby that is you have to put the baby on your shoulder and tap over there uh, in between the two uh, uh, shoulder blades you have to tap so that the excess gas will come out and then make the baby to sleep then uh, the baby will be calm for at least 2 to 3 hours but sometimes some some reason some babies will have some uh, 
I don't know. Some babies are always uh, like that, always demanding, always crying. Maybe like that, and uh, that uh, actually, so all people are different in nature. That's why mm -hmm. we cannot expect baby to be uh, simply suck your milk and sleep, and after wake up at two three hours and then again suck milk and sleep. That is so. Babies yeah, always he, babies he sleeps, differ. Uh, at night he sleeps like a normal people. Uh, uh, at ten to five he sleeps, no disturbance. But in the morning time, daytime he always want me near uh, him. Almost uh, three months. Maybe, maybe some uh, insecurity is there. It is not like three months. Some babies are like that for at least two years. They will be like that. That is. Uh, okay, we cannot you. say any particular know, reason for that, but human nature is like that. Okay. Okay. Ma'am, uh, now we are discussed about the bre breast milk. So some mothers uh, have uh, enough uh, breast milk. So in my uh, uh, delivery time, one of my neighbor uh, suggests me one tablet. If you are take this tablet, your breast milk will increase. So is there any, uh, other than tablets, any natural way or uh, like a... Actually, uh, um, that is uh, tablets when you are pregnant. No, after delivery. After delivery. After delivery, we have got tablets. We also are prescribing Ayurvedic preparations for that. Shadavari extract is there in all the uh, tablets and you can increase your breast milk by taking uh, sprouted beans uh, like uh, el, uh, then jaggery etc can increase your breast milk most important is that you have to keep your baby to the breast at least 20 minutes uh, every time you are feeding because the most important stimulation for secretion of milk is the sucking reflex or sucking of the baby itself and another thing, adequate hydration of the mother. You have to drink at least one to 1 1.5 liters of water per day to increase the amount of breast milk. Then, um, we have, like, uh, which age limit we can give that uh, children breast milk uh, up to two or three years? Yeah, there actually, there is nothing like that, but at least two years, you have to, two years of age, it is better to breastfeed the baby. Mm -hmm. And at least six months exclusive breastfeeding. That is, you are giving really nothing else, uh, only breast milk is given. But nowadays, we all are working mothers, we have to go for our work. Then uh, it may not be possible to give a full breastfeeding till two years of age. Mm -hmm. okay. Dr. Shina, I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, in the antenatal, uh, so since we are studying Montessori education, we have yeah. to know the psychology of the child and uh, uh, the development, uh, the child's development uh, during the antenatal. So what is the right sister or what is the right way to connect with the baby? And uh, as we all heard about Abhimanyu uh, has learned uh, uh, skills uh, uh, mother's womb. So uh, are there possible ways to teach the baby in the womb itself so what are the possible ways or uh, the techniques we can use and when the connection starts uh, to the mother and the baby it's connection starts from the beginning itself but the baby can hear the sounds from at least 14 weeks and the auditory system is almost fully developed by 20 weeks and the baby can hear the sounds but uh, the thing is uh, always be uh, the thing is, uh, we can have, I have already told you that, that you can have, hear music, you can have relaxing stories, you can have uh, hearing motivational speeches, etc. can have a positive impact on your baby. And one more question, uh, Dr. Shina. 
after uh, 20 weeks, uh, like uh, currently I'm expecting my third child and I'm having constant uh, pain in the abdomen. Now I'm 20 weeks. Uh, so uh, what, what it is about and why there is the constant pain? The constant pain means uh, the pain is coming and going. Yeah. So that may be mild to pre contractions you are having. And uh, in that case, you have to take some uh, uterine relaxing agent uh, after consulting your doctor. Ma'am, one more question from my side. Yes. Uh, in uh, that uh, diabetic related, in yeah. diabetic, diabetic uh, time, uh, what type of precautions in a diabetic patient uh, in conceiving a child, so what type of precaution and uh, what treatment we need? Yeah, that's a very good question. Because uh, if you are already diabetic, uh, that is what mm -hmm. you mean? You are already diabetic. I am so, not diabetic and I want to second baby also. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. The most important thing is that uh, if you are going to conceive and you are already diabetic, you have to stop uh, your diabetic um, Medic certain medications you may need to stop and convert to insulin and a proper uh, blood sugar level control is very important that is your hba1c that is three months blood three sugar months. value uh, that, that hba1c should be less than 6.5 while you trying for conception that is very important and before conceiving you have to check your um, renal function test as well as check your eyes and uh, check your uh, heart, etc. That is whether the diabetes has affected any of these organs or not. And the, the effect of diabetes on pregnancy is such a way that uh, that is those who patients uh, having diabetes before pregnancy. Mm -hmm. These, if you are, and you are having a high blood sugar level in the first three months of pregnancy, the baby can have congenital malformations, especially cardiac malformations. Uh, uh, neural tube defects, etc. In such cases, so congenital malformation is our threat, or you, the baby may can undergo abortion, or you, you may have a uh, baby without any heartbeat. So mm -hmm. all these these things can happen, and even if it, these things are not happening, you are continuing your pregnancy, and in the third trimester you are going with uncontrolled blood sugar, you can have excess fluid in your baby excessive weight for you as well as the baby, preterm labor, that is you are giving birth to the baby before date, labor complications, more chance for cesarean section, etc. So always have a tight control of your blood sugar, then you don't have to worry about all these things. Nothing will happen to you. A tight control and some medicines are not good for your baby. And if you are planning, to uh, have a pregnancy, you have to, before planning, that is before conceiving, you consult your doctor, change your medication that are safe you know, uh, to your baby, then you can have pregnancy, normally as any other person. So a good glycemic control, SP1C less than 6.5, you are fine. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, ma'am, thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, I have a question for you. After yes. giving birth, what are the reasons for this prolapsed uterus? Prolapsed uterus, immediately after birth, everybody is not having any prolapsed uterus. Prolapsed uterus, normally we see when uh, it is 80 years or more than 50 years. Nowadays, prolapsed uterus is uh, uncommon because not all people are giving birth vaginally. And more than that, not much children also, only two or three. Previously, nine, 10 children were there. Those uh, mothers uh, were prone to have prolapse because he, vaginal delivery can have a detrimental effect on your pelvic floor. That is those muscles that give support to your uterus. And that can, these pelvic floor muscles can get damaged during vaginal delivery, not normal uh, vaginal delivery. Some Vaginal delivery, when there was difficulty in delivering the baby, a big baby or forceps delivery, that can lead on to prolapse. So that damage is causing the prolapse. And you have to take adequate pelvic floor muscles, adequate rest to the muscles after vaginal delivery. That is also important to avoid prolapse in the future. Thank you. Thank you.
Ma'am, uh, I also have one more uh, question. So there is a number of methods we can control our uh, like uh, birth control. So yeah. in my case, uh, I am very fear to uh, like uh, wear that uh, property. So I uh, uh, temporarily uh, like uh, close like that. So is there any um, good method to uh, control the birth? Like uh, if, if someone uh, want to a child after uh, two, uh, five to six years from the uh, first delivery. So is there any uh, good method to control that birth? All the methods are good, but the failure rate only differ. You can use condom, that is uh, most convenient, but the failure rate is more for condom. Second is oral contraceptive pills, that you can use at least two years minimum. Uh, but the thing is that you should not be breastfeeding mother and uh, combined oral contraceptive pills you can use without uh, any harm. But you, the disadvantage is that every day, every uh, particular time you have to take the pill. That's why we are advising uh, us interval contraception corporate because once you in, you have this corporate inside, it is called an intrauterine contraceptive device. It is it has got a local action preventing pregnancy and implantation, and it is therefore at, you can keep it there for at least ten years, which is available in our government setup. So that is why the best method is corporate itself. If you are so much worried about this, you can use oral contraceptive pills. So if we are using that copper tea, some of our friends are uh, said like uh, we can uh, get the side effects after uh, putting that uh, copper tea and heavy bleeding in that uh, period's time. So that's why I'm uh, fear to uh, <laughs> opt that copper tea. This copper tea is an intrauterine device and uh, some side effects are there, but not for all people. Some people are having no symptoms or nothing like that, but First few cycles, there may be increase in the bleeding during menstruation. There can be some infections. Or there can be pelvic inflammatory disease. But not in all people. Only a few people come to us with these symptoms. And if you have got any symptoms like that, you can remove us and when you recur. Okay. So you don't have to worry about putting about copper tea. If you have got any problem, you can remove it very easily. So in case of one, uh, one might. Yes, you are not audible. Hello? Hello? Your voice is breaking, Vina. Dr. Sheena, I have uh, one more question for you. Like, uh, though in the uh, legal marriage uh, marriage age for girls are 18, what is the medically correct age to be uh, pregnant or to give childbirth? Actually, uh, medically correct is not nothing like that. From 18 years to 25 years, it is the best time to become pregnant. But as you know, nowadays, uh, these uh, ladies are getting more education. They want to have settled in their life. They have, want to have their own job, their own home, etc. So normally we all get pregnant sometimes it, if it is more than 30 years of age. And nowadays uh, our celebrities are becoming pregnant 38, 40, 43, etc. So there is uh, nothing like I cannot uh, tell an age, but it is better to have a uh, pregnancy. Uh, between uh, before 25 years of age. Okay, if uh, if we are getting pregnant in uh, very late, uh, very late. So will it have effect on uh, baby's development, growth development, or in anything like that? Yeah, it can have because the maternal age, uh, especially if you are more than 40 years of age, uh, as you advance in age, our egg, X or our ovum they are also increasing in age. So there can be faulty ovum or chromosomally abnormal ova can get fertilized and that can lead on to Down syndrome or any syndromes in your baby. But the chance, there is a chance, even if you are becoming pregnant at 18 or 40, but the chance is more for elderly 
mothers. That is one reason. But as uh, for the scientific advancement, due to the scientific advancement in the field of uh, fetal medicine, we can diagnose all these things before 20 weeks nowadays. And we can do according to that. So we don't have to worry about becoming pregnant after 40 or after 35 because of these reasons. And also mothers can have more problem. They can have diabetes, hypertension, if they are becoming more uh, advanced in age. But all these can be, uh, that means it can, there are a solution for all these problems. So don't, you don't have to worry about it. Thank you. And uh, one more question. Uh, if the pregnant uh, mother is, has contracted STD, so uh, will the baby also uh, have STD or is there any uh, way to prevent uh, baby to getting infected? What STD you mean? Yeah, STD. What STD? Like a HIV or... Oh, yeah. uh, HIV, HIV can transmit from the mother to baby. And uh, you can have uh, anti... Um, retroviral drugs during pregnancy to limit the tra viral transmission as well as you can uh, have a uh, what do you mean uh, you can have elective cesarean section for that baby but the thing is that uh, HIV can transmit from mother to ba baby we cannot 100% prevent it okay, thank you and uh, one more uh, doubt uh, as we were discussing about uh, diabetic pregnant mothers so uh, I have heard uh, somewhere that uh, when, if the mother is diabetic, there are high chances for the child to give uh, congenital uh, heart diseases. So is, the, is it related to the diabetes of the mother? Yeah, if the mother is diabetic, there can be congenital heart disease, more chance for that. If the diabetes is uncontrolled, control your blood sugar, no problem. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Ma'am, uh, if chance to the diabetic uh, one to the child in um, diabetic patient, mother have uh, conceiving one child, after birth of child, uh, the, if any chance to diabetic in child also? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, diabetic type 1? No, not type 1, type 2. Type 2. If your first degree relative is diabetic. For example, my, if my father is diabetic, I may develop diabetes in when I am uh, of his age. There is a chance. I can develop diabetes even before that, the age he has developed diabetes. But type 1 diabetes is actually another disease. Type 1 diabetes, those children are born with problem with their insulin secretion in the pancreas. It's so actually a genetically uh, mutation, abnormal mutation in their genes. That is different from this. There is no transmission through placenta. Like as mm -hmm. I have told about HIV, diabetes will not or thyroid disease will not transfer from the mother to the baby through placenta. But they can be. Some babies are born with congenital absence of thyroid gland. They can have hypothyroidism. The mother need not uh, mother may not be suffering from hypothyroidism, but baby can have congenital hypothyroidism. All these things can happen, but uh, the disease transmitting through, the sexually transmitted diseases can transmit through placenta. But uh, diabetes, uh, pressure, etc. will not. Okay. Okay. Then one more question, ma'am. Uh, that PCOD and PCOS. So we need to uh, take a hormonal tab, which is necessary, or exercise through uh, natural remedies through we can uh, reduce that uh, PCOD. PCOD is the most important metabolic problem as gynecologists we are facing nowadays. Almost 30% of our female population is suffering from this, especially adolescent girls. They are not having any regular periods. They are obese. They are not working out properly, not doing any exercise. So this is actually, we are facing a dangerous situation now. So polycystic ovarian disease, always you should have a lifestyle change a routine exercise, diet modification is the key to success. But you can uh, have a regular cycle by using hormonal pills for a short period of time. But it will not cure the polycystic ovarian disease. Only chance for cure is lifestyle modification. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
yeah that hormonal tablets we are intaking like diabetic two type diabetic uh, will affect maybe i heard about that that's why i am talk uh, some tablets can affect uh, um, can cause an increase in blood sugar level but not for short periods of time if you are do, uh, taking tablets for a long period of time can cause glucose intolerance so which type of uh, treatment we need ma'am this pcod is cure you need uh, a, a dietary modification is very important reduce your calories exercise properly as well as that you can consult your doctor for uh, um, some tablets for uh, having uh, if your plan is for becoming pregnant the tablets are different if your plan is for having a regular cycle the tablets are different so in adolescent girls uh, those with less than 18 years or 18 to 20 years the treatment is different than with an adult patient who wants to become pregnant so if you are having pcod and you want to become pregnant always you have to take help from your gynecologist okay must need treatment yeah you. okay ma'am thank you so much ma'am uh, during that uh, pregnancy time uh, what kind of foods we want to add in our uh, daily routine and what kinds of food we want to avoid and one more thing uh, the pregnant ladies can do any uh, physical exercises like a small uh, movements so some of our parents and uh, relatives are saying like uh, don't take too much weight and uh, like that kinds of advices we can get in our uh, pregnancy time so is there uh, any uh, simple exercise that pregnancy ladies can do yeah so what kind of foods foods i have already told you can take any food available in your house other than this pineapple and papaya but uh, uh, you have to take additional calories that is additional 300 kilo calories you require you can have milk uh, for uh, twice a day and you can add uh, an egg every alternate day or a banana every alternate day and take plenty of green leafy vegetables fruits um, so that uh, you are adequately hydrated the fruits and vegetables contain antioxidants vitamins so that is helpful for your baby and also uh, most important uh, thing that uh, during pregnancy especially in the first trimester you can suffer from constipation difficulty in passing motion so by taking adequate fiber that is by taking adequate fruits and vegetables you can avoid this problem also but certain things i have already told that you have to avoid smoking that is you may not be smoking but if your husband is smoking passive smoking is also deterior deteriorates for your baby so you should avoid smoking and alcohol containing beverages you have to avoid and also caffeine caffeine means uh, caffeine containing drinks pepsi coca cola etc contain coffee and also coffee contain caffeine so caffeine should be minimum that is if you are taking a coffee person if you are a coffee person you are taking 3 4 cups of coffee per day you have to limit it and another thing exercise is uh, best exercise is to have a brisk walking at least 10 minutes per day you can have stretching exercises and uh, exercise videos are available in the youtube uh, you can uh, look into that but uh, if you are an exercising person only you should do it before pregnancy you are exercising it is okay to continue your exercise at a moderate level not to that before pregnancy level but you are not at all exercising previously and you want to do all the exercise in pregnancy it may not be having a good effect on your pregnancy and in certain cases those who are having preterm contractions as Uh, she has told she is having pain all the time she should not go for exercise and those patient with a history of preterm labor somebody told she delivered at seven and a half months such person patients should not go for severe exercise like that and one more one more thing weight lifting heavy weight should be avoided during pregnancy and also um, lifting heavy weight as well as heavy exercises moderate level of activity should be there Okay, thank you. Is pregnancy no see and uh, um, that uh, emotional that that is also that is related that um, other stress stress is also related to each other that uh, no see in pregnancy. Maybe, but uh, most of the people are experiencing no see and vomiting in the first trimester. That is first to three months of pregnancy. it is actually due to the effect of a hormone called chorionic human chorionic gonadotropin that hormone is 
emetogenic. That is, it, it can cause nausea and vomiting. That is one reason for nausea and vomiting. Another is you are having a, your belly is increasing in size. So your stomach uh, and intestine are pushed upwards. So what can have is that you can have reflex from the, the contents in the stomach can go into reflex into your esophagus. That can lead on to, uh, that means uh, there will be acid reflex and that can cause heartburn, that can cause uh, dyspepsia and that also can cause nausea. So this nausea and vomiting, uh, stress is also a factor, that is, uh, that is a thing, but nausea and vomiting, normally it will subside by three and a half or four months. And some people uh, again tell I'm having nausea and vomiting. That may be due to some stress-related problem, but in the first trimester, it is due to hormonal action. And some people may require a treatment for that, especially those uh, conditions called, called hyperemesis gravidarum. In that situation, patient cannot take any fluids, cannot take any food. She's bedridden, she's, she's losing her weight very fast. In such cases, you have to take her to hospital. You have to put on her IV fluids. You have to put on treatment. Uh, put on her treatment because uh, if you are starving for a few days, it can lead on to a condition called ketosis. So starvation ketosis that can increase vomiting. So in such cases, uh, you should not tell that it is due to stress and all. You uh, give her help, bring her to hospital and give her IV fluids. Ma'am, one more doubt. Uh, our parents are giving me that uh... A ghee, the pure ghee with uh, that jaggery coffee, and uh, they are saying like it's uh, if you have this, then you can get a normal delivery. So is there any <laughs> scientific reason behind that, or otherwise it's like a uh, like a blender like that? Huh? Doesn't have any scientific reason, but jaggery is good because it contains a good amount of iron. So you, you can have increased amount of uh, hemoglobin in your body. So jaggery you can take. And pure ghee is also good, nothing bad. You may increase your weight also if you're an if you're an obese person taking too much ghee. Dr. Sheena, with this I I got uh, one very big doubt. Like after delivery, uh, we uh, still have that uh, tummy pregnancy uh, pregnancy tummy, uh, tummy so uh, in uh, my side that is Tamil Nadu side they used to uh, tie with the uh, cotton sari or something to uh, make it flat or to get uh, that uh, flat tummy how much it is advisable or uh, is there a chance to get flat tummy after pregnancy because most of the people who are like obese or who is like a uh, little chubby their uh, stomach it doesn't goes in it's still uh, like a stomach only so what are the reasons and how we can uh, compact that to the flat to get the flat tummy yeah, that's very important. The most important is postnatal exercises. Only by doing postnatal exercises after six weeks, uh, you have to uh, do some exercise that will strengthen your abdominal muscles. By pregnancy, your abdominal muscles become relaxed and stretched. That is why the tummy comes out like this. And you can use this abdominal binder if it is made of cloth. Uh, or uh, you can use the abdominal uh, binders like in shape and all you can use for first six weeks. And after that, you have to do exercise, limit your calorie in day. Uh, you start exercising after 45 days itself. Even though you are uh, you have undergone a C-section, you can start exercise after six weeks. And limit the calorie intake. No, do not take too much rice, ghee and etc. Sure, thank you. My, uh, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, in the pregnancy, that uh, labor room, uh, every lady have a very confused and tension in that time. As a doctor, what advice to give the uh, woman? The first time, someone is first time experience, someone is second, third. But uh, a normal delivery time, what type of mentality we want to keep? And uh, doctor said advice. One yeah. lady, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you give the me? The labor room is a te tenseful situation. 
uh, that is for the doctor as well as the patient, everybody stands there. But the thing is that a positive attitude, that is everything is going to be okay. I will overcome this. I will face this pain. And nowadays we have got painless labor also, epidural analgesia that can alleviate your pain. Previously, there was nothing like that. Now it is there. You can afford that if you are very, uh, so much worried about your pains. But I have seen that people are tolerating these pains in, for a good cause. So, uh, and prenatally also, you can have some yoga and some breathing exercise. You learn some breathing exercise so that you can, but once you experience pain, such uh, this breathing exercise uh, help you to tolerate that pain. Uh, that is the most important uh, aspect of uh, labor room. And uh, you can have music. Nowadays, you can have music. Uh, you can uh, hear music if you want. Uh, that is uh, this thing. And hope for the best and keep a positive attitude. And we will overcome this also. That's the thing. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. I, I also heard about that uh, breathing exercise more you know, useful for that. Uh, the baby coming out that time, the pushing. That yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Everything, uh, if you are so much worried, if you are so much tensed, I cannot tolerate this pain, everybody will become tensed. But if you are so confident and I can manage this or I will manage this, I think you all have seen a video where early money was uh, delivering. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah. How comfortably she was uh, yeah, doing that. Sure. I don't know, maybe it is an edited video. Nobody can mm -hmm. do like that. But uh, the thing is, uh, the positive attitude always uh, gives you a positive outcome. Yeah. And trust your doctor and trust your uh, labor room staff. Yeah. yeah, that's very important yeah. thing. Very important. Because uh, our, in surroundings, we are looking uh, yeah, that helping that time, uh, that kind heart, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. that yeah, everything that, that, we are yeah. accepting that time. So uh, that type of uh, and that time, yeah, environment also we need yeah, that environment is very important and in that case i am working in a private hospital so uh, we are trying to do like that only but i have worked in government setup also there is uh, so many patients are there the, uh, the individual one-to-one -one care we cannot give so that is a problem we all are facing yeah yeah thank you ma'am dr shina with this uh, delivery room have a question like uh, in the western countries they allow uh, the father of yeah. the child uh, or the husband to be present in the delivery room uh, or to cut the umbilical cord but in india i, I uh, like it is mostly it is not allowed so why yeah. it is like that and uh, do we you don't have allow, we, we don't allow to cut the umbilical cord because uh, in our setup uh, uh, we want to avoid umbilical sepsis and all but i uh, if somebody insists me that uh, the father of the child wants to be with the uh, in the delivery room. I always allow them to be there. That is it e uh, legally uh, allowed in India to? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 is, it, it, it has come. It has come in Kerala. Uh, Federation of Obstetrics and Gynecology Society has educated a birth companion. It is allowed in medical colleges also. A birth companion. You can choose a birth companion that can be your husband, can be your mother, or can be your friend, we should allow it. Thank you. Is that all? Can we finish? Yeah, we have bothered our questions to you and thank you for your patience, <laughs> Dr. Sheena. Yes. <laughs> Correct. Yes, he was also yeah. thinking that. Yeah. Well, Thank well, you so much. Very well. Thanks. You people were very good and very lively. Any more questions, guys? Ex yes, yes, yes Miss Kitty. Yes, come on. Uh, yes, uh, Ma'am, you have told about the postpartum anxiety. Yeah, and in depression. some women it is uh, developed into uh, postpartum depression. Yeah, and is there any uh, any factors that uh, all women are? I think all women are not going through this situation. Some are going into deep depression after this uh, delivery. Yeah, in that case, I think uh, they might be suffering from some depressive traits even before delivery. 
but uh, delivery and uh, after giving birth to a baby it gives you immense responsibilities sleepless nights all these things so support from your partner your family is the most important thing to tide over such a situation and uh, if you are uh, depression it is a psychiatric illness so for that you have to if you are seeing a depressive face the baby uh, the mother is not feeding the baby the mother doesn't want to look into the baby the mother becomes angry or she is not taking any food she is uh, inso- incessantly crying all the time such sy- symptoms are diagnostic of depression so in such situation she needs treatment nothing else than that how to uh, give take her to a psychiatrist take medication depression is completely curable and uh, it, it is treatable disease if you are not treating it you are not diagnosing it and you are telling the mother that she is doing she is not liking the baby and all we all uh, have read that some mothers have killed their babies because of postpartum depression so postpartum depression has to be addressed it is nothing like the anxiety and depression they are very different and in such situation seek for medical help okay ma'am and how this uh, this condition affect the child if you are taking a, a adequate treatment a proper treatment immediately it won't affect the child because uh, depression uh, if you, if it is treated the uh, woman become perfectly normal okay thank you uh, one doubt if ma'am if the mother is taking uh, anti depression tablets uh, and Uh, if she breastfeed the baby will that affect the baby also some tablets can affect because the baby can have excessive sedation and all but uh, most of the psychiatrists will not prescribe uh, such uh, harm to the baby but if uh, if the depressive trait of the mother is so much that she needs uh, strong tablets then we, uh, we may, she may not be able to uh, breastfeed the baby and uh, will that uh, uh, that uh, that for their mental development also will it uh, uh, will it affect their brain development and all? no 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 and uh, while uh, pregnancy also if she is having uh, tablet- while pregnancy also there are nowadays there are safer tablets are av- available that is safer to the baby so without any problem she can take Okay, any more doubts i hope all the doubts are cleared <laughs> again you may have doubts right <laughs> all our ladies sitting here yes yeah one more <laughs> doubt ma'am one more doubt ma'am that uh, uh, in menopause um, ma'am is here so we can ask uh, we are also going that age <laughs> yes <laughs> we want to know about that thing also that menopause can you explain that uh, i am seeing my mother mother in law and my aunties are having so many problems in this thing so depression so many tension having so what what uh, need to care about this situation yeah depression is very common in the perimenopause and postmenopausal age group uh, that is also uh, the hormonal imbalance is causing that absence of estrogen and progesterone can lead on to emotional instability so in that situation also i have to tell only one thing you have to get support from the family you can have some hormone replacement therapies if you are uh, if there is a hormone imbalance and you can take psychiatric uh, medication also so if there is depression uh, there is a, the, they are very much angry and uh, they are uncontrollable then you have to take treatment okay okay thank you ma'am Okay, then shall we wind up if you don't have any doubts okay okay ma'am so uh, i would like uh, to call miss amli to propose vote of thanks thank you ms shabana a warm and graceful evening to our most beloved baba alexander sir respected chief guest 
that she Amplie Hindit, the student of NCDC Kottayam, 33rd online batch, feel privileged to extend the word of thanks. Let me first of all start by giving glory to Almighty for bestowing a knowledge filled day on us. I extended my thanks to our, our founder, Baba Alexander Sir, for providing such an opportunity to enlighten ourselves with best of knowledge. On behalf of organizing team, my heart fills with a lot of gratitude and respect for our distinguished guest, Dr. Sheena Ablash, for not only sparing her invaluable time for us to grace this occasion, but also for enlightening us with her commentable talk on prenatal and antenatal care. Thank you, Dr. Sheena, for clearing our confusion, our understanding pertaining to today's subject. You have indeed put best of your effort to make this webinar an unforgettable one. I have also obligated to our coordinator and evaluator for providing us the opportunity for the best in knowledge. Finally, I would like to thank everyone present here for making this event a resounding success. Thank you all. Thank you, Ambali. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am, uh, for your patience and uh, your valuable uh, information for my students. We are very lucky to get you as our guest today. It is a very really, uh, nice occasion for me uh, to give you a wonderful uh, class for my students. I'm very happy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, I, I was having a busy schedule today, but still I was able to come at time. Uh, thank you very much. Hope uh, you all have understood uh, regarding the prenatal care. Thank you. Okay. Shall I leave? Yeah, yeah, ma. Yeah, we can wind up with the national anthem. Okay. <laughs> 